In this video, we'll take a look at the straightforward application of Waveboard to a Digico audio mixer. Digico mixers, they are high-end mixers for the most demanding applications you can imagine. I think the largest surface supports like 200 or 300 input channels or even more. The Waveboard is in no way intended to control everything you can in such a device. Rather, it is conceived to be the most awesome sidecar you can imagine that will break out control of a limited amount of specific channels. That could be inputs, groups, aux buses, matrices, etc. You will create user-friendly, safe environments in minutes with the Waveboard. It is eight channels, motorized fader. It has buttons, three buttons, which are typically mapped to muting, to solo, and maybe to a parameter adjustment. And then on top, it has an encoder knob that is typically adjusting channel balance. Then it has also banks that you can go between. It is also possible to extend the waveboard with even more, so you can combine two waveboards and have the same banks actually affect channels or faders on both the waveboards combined. So that's modularity in the Skyhawk universe. You see here on the screen a window into the Digico mixer we are controlling. So if I move these two faders on the right bank, thank you, then you see these faders are also moving down here. So I'm just exercising that with my uh, mouse and that I can also turn on and off uh, mute here, which corresponds to the muting that I can also do on the panel. So, so you can see these are synchronous every way you can imagine. If we look at the um, knob up here, then we are actually adjusting. You see this, uh, the balance here is adjusted using the knobs on top as well. And in the displays, it even says uh, the label of the channels as well. We have also gain sitting right here, and I think uh, you can notice the gain settings are up there on top. So you see I'm adjusting gain now with a knob or a button. The buttons are two-way buttons, so upper and lower edges will actually just notice the values you see right there, okay? So these values are adjusted on the, um, on the buttons if I press the edges, okay? And I can do the same over here. All right, so that is like the input channels. On the next page, I have auxes and I have auxes, auxes all over the place. On this one, I have groups and matrices. And then on the last one, we have something else. And that something else is all the stuff you can do inside Digico's universe, which is shown in this window here. I wish it was bigger, but to show you that our fader control actually goes across all these and also our muting, you can see in that tiny little drawing, that is clear to you that this is actually, and here you have the groups and you have the matrices. I can adjust the faders and that. So I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I can actually do that. If I'm really precise, then I'm also able to operate things from that tiny little view I'm having uh, into that. So the auxes was over here and I can also mute the, uh, the auxes here. And what about soloing? Yes, you see soloing the little green thingy. Now, if you wanted this in a bigger window, I think there's a way to do it. So I think we need to go to right and to aux. And then I know that the mapping that we have here is for the last, the first channels you see in this window is like this. Those two channels are the last channels on my waveboard. I know this is Digico configuration and it is not entirely set up for a um, demonstration like this. So I'm kind of making my way around. But for those of you who might find this video interesting, uh, it is because you own one of these devices. You probably know exactly what I'm talking about and far more than I do. So. Um, that's great, but I do know a whole lot more about Reactor than you do, I'm pretty sure, because this is the application we have designed at Skahoy that will allow you to do this, not just for one Digico mixer, but for as many as you want. You can basically add devices here. So if we search for, for uh, Digico, then you see different models pop up. You can select those. They'll now have a new device ID. So if I save this, you see there's a second device available to me which could be another Digico audio mixer, and I can add other types of devices. So if I search for, and I know on our network, at least we have a lot of broadcast devices that has audio control in them, like an ATEM switcher. So these ATEM switches, if I select those by auto discovery here, let's just do that real quick, then it will pop up and it would actually be possible for me to blend in and map sources down onto the waveboard that would include an ATEM switcher, like a master channel or an input channel, microphone, whatever. It all happens in the channel config. And 
this is where your configuration will happen. The configuration you have seen for what we did today, the first eight lines in this mapping table is the first page. The next page would be the next eight lines. So basically starting here. And there you see aux outputs. There you see on, on this page here, we have groups. We have the matrix outs. And then finally, we have the control groups. That's what I couldn't remember, right? And for each of these, the device index is um, the device ID is referring to the device ID you see for the device. So if I wanted to control the, the other digit code that I could add, then I would pick device ID 2 and then still the audio channel that I wanted. This is like the basic type. This is the, t the kind of thing, the aspect inside the unit that I'm controlling. And for Digico, I think we have a number of things down here. We have uh, aux outputs, we have uh, input channels, we have control group, and up here we also see groups and matrix outs. Let's clean up a little bit and uh, start over. So I would basically delete this device and um, also delete this one and just focus on the Digico we already connected to. But then I'll make a, I'll remove this configuration and then I'll start over again, creating a waveboard generic audio control. We need to now add the item. So I'm just doing this all over again, right? I'll just add new, select my configuration here and I wanna do some Digico input channels on device ID number one, audio channel number one. So I think we're already there and we should, yeah, to make it more fun, let's just add a second one. Ah, wait a second. I think we can just, if we like select this one, then I can press this one to duplicate. Maybe I can do the same here. No, I need to go there and then, but this one I can press the plus one. So if, if you had added like, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, add a few, then um, yeah, once again, I'll just open this. It's like marking the line and then I can copy this down a number of times. That's good. Okay, copy, copy, copy. And then look at this awesome feature. Plus one, plus one, plus one. Okay, cool. You see, that is how easy it actually was for us to map the first f uh, five input channels down onto the wave board, just like that from within Reactor. So, it's, it's a really, really easy tool to use for this kind of mapping. Here at the end, I will invite you to make sure you never miss any news from Skahoy. So like and subscribe, sign up to our newsletter and follow us on social media. And then you will always stay tuned on the latest innovations from our company.